Good morning, everybody. This is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We are out here this morning. Guys, we have some severe weather coming as far as cold for our area this time of the year. It is unprecedented. We told y'all about the Grand Solar Minimum and how we're going to have extremes. We went from being extremely hot and dry to being extremely cold. So, well, as a result, we showed y'all in our winter prep video about our orange tree. Well, one of the things we've got to do is we can't leave the oranges on there because they will freeze. We have temperature in the teens coming wind chill factors. Uh, this is our Louisiana orange. We are proud to have this tree. We thought we lost most of it last year because the other side of it froze. But this side this year pulled out and it actually, there was almost a thousand oranges on here at one time. But the tree shed them to take care of its own self because it just didn't have enough tree to handle that much. And I don't know how many is on here. I haven't counted them. But the mission today is to harvest oranges. And guys, look, a lot of the people in the northern climate goes, wow, it sure is nice to, to be able to have oranges and stuff like that. You can have oranges even though you live in the north. They make these in dwarf varieties that you can actually bring indoors during the winter months when it's cold and put them in front of a window or something. And they, guys, they smell. In the spring, oh my gosh, when they start blooming, it has got to be the most heavenly smell you will ever smell. Now, the oranges, uh, depending on what part of the country you're in, can take anywhere from four to six months to mature. Ours come on about March, uh, the end of March, and they get ready really after Thanksgiving, to be honest with you. Um, but we don't ever let them go that far because usually we have a cold spell. Now, some years it doesn't get cold till December, and we just leave them until it gets cold. And they are, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt to harvest them a little early. Typically what you want to do is harvest them when there is absolutely no green left on them. Well, we don't have that luxury now. We have to pick them regardless. There is a specific way to pick an orange. You can't just reach up there and just pull it off a limb because if you pull it out of the inside of the top of the rind on it, if you pull that stem out of there, it'll go bad in no time. You have to clip them in order to harvest them. Now you want to fertilize these about every four to six weeks after they bloom. And you want to fertilize them with a, a good all around fertilize. I mean, they need a little more nitrogen than, um, than some other plants do. But guys, we use the Job's stakes that you just drive in the ground, the fruit stakes that they sell. Seems to do good. You just put them out around the edge of the limb span. And they need to be watered uh, pretty heavy about once every couple of weeks. And you need to let them kind of kind of dry out a little bit, not dry completely, but you don't want to just do this everyday watering lightly on top of the ground because what that does is it brings all the roots to the surface of the ground. Oranges needs a really deep soaking about once every week or two. It needs to just be deep into the ground. Let it, I'm not talking about really soak it good and then just leave it alone. So that's a little bit about oranges. I'm not sure um, you know, how educational it is. Uh, you do have problem with pests with this, I'll say. Uh, our biggest issue is grasshoppers. Uh, these big old giant green grasshoppers, I'm sure if I looked, there's probably one in this tree somewhere. But you can take the leaves, and I'll pull a leaf off here. Well, I'll show you one right here. They come at night, and you see this leaf like this? The grasshoppers just come up at night. And they'll get on these leaves, and they'll just munch away. And you hardly ever find them because they're the dark green grasshoppers, and they match the leaf color. You, you don't see them unless you just really look for them. We also have a problem occasionally with what we call leaf miners. Uh, the leaf miners will get on here, and they'll, uh, they'll curl the leaves up on the ends a little bit here. And what we'll do is periodically we'll come by, and we will pull those leaves off and get rid of them in case there's any eggs on them or anything like that. And try to, you know, try to help the tree out as much as possible. But now with the freeze coming, 
we're going to get these oranges off of here, and we're going to try to protect this tree with some uh, with some plastic or quilts or something other to make it through. We just have one night in uh, in the teens wind chill. Guys, we're going to have a 16 to 20 mile an hour wind with 24 degree temperatures, which is going to push us down into teens as a wind chill. And we're going to try to protect this tree from that north side where that wind's going to be coming from so that maybe we don't lose the tree this year. Because, guys, look, nothing like fresh oranges. And I'm going to tell you, if we lose it this year, we will be going with a variety that we can put in pots now. I will say this, these citrus trees will grow to the size of the pot that you put them in. We have a lemon tree in the uh, greenhouse. We've lost our lemons year after year. We have lemons and then they freeze and die. Uh, so we've decided with the grand solar minimum coming in like it is, and it's going to be even colder, we're going to go ahead and invest in these trees and put them in pots. And that way we can take them to the greenhouse and we can overwinter them and we don't lose our fruits. And guys, fruits are essential for health because these things have so many vitamins and minerals in them, especially when they're raised organically like we do. There's no pesticides on them. Um, if you want to see a good video on pesticides, on the, the 12 most dangerous fruits and vegetables to eat, go watch Dr. Berg. Um, he has a video out about the, the fruits and the vegetables that have the most pesticides. And I will go ahead and tell you, there's one that probably most people eat that is probably has the highest amount of pesticides on it. I to strictly raise our own, even if we have to build a miniature greenhouse and put them in it, if we have to bring them indoors in the wintertime, whatever we got to do, we try to raise our own fruit here at Deep South Homestead. Now to harvest these today, I'm going to use a set of snippers, and we're going to use the... Hoss tool um, bucket here. We have this. We got this from Hoss tool. Um, very, very handy to have. Guys, this thing is just, it's just really, really good because what it is, is, and get it turned around here, get myself set up. I can hold this thing like this. Now, we use these to pick blueberries in. We use it to pick pears in, to pick apples in, stuff like that. And it is so handy. We're going to use it to pick our oranges in. Now, I have, uh, see, Ms. Wanda here has given me a couple of different options as far as snippers. Now, these, I'm going to see if I can get up if the camera won't go too bad. This is a handy dandy. This is a little, it's a little small pair. But you know what? You don't need a big pair to do this with. And you want to come up here and you want to clip this orange you want to leave just I like to leave about a quarter of an inch of stem on it like that right there snip it off you see that little stem sticking up there I know that's not kosher in a grocery store but that's the way I like to do it because I just feel a little safer with that stem on there about it deteriorating we'll go right here at this one come right up there where it attaches to the limb at let's make an easy little snip same with this now, guys, these will last for quite a while. Guys, I've got another pair of little snippers here. These are made by Fiskar. Uh, these are good little pruning snips. You just want to reach up and just snip them off. Leave that little stem on there. We've got two or three different types of snips we use. This one's a little green, but that's okay. It'll, it'll ripen. We'll come on in here. Leave about a quarter inch. Snip it off. Look at look at the size of that guy. That's you can't get any better than that. That is just pure homegrown delicious fruit. Completely organic. Another thing I want to mention about your fruits when they're, I guess I'm going to call it in their virgin stage like this, is you want to be careful not to just throw them in something because if you bruise them at this stage, uh, they will begin to deteriorate rather rapidly. So you want to be really careful with them when you're handling them. That's one reason we like this Hoss toolbox like this because 
it really allows us to be able to lay them down in there and they don't get damaged and it's just look at that god that's just that's just beautiful i mean you can't ask for anything any better than that right there you're not going to get that in a grocery store Okay guys, we've got them harvested this morning. We're gonna take them in the house now and we're gonna kind of unstack them. We don't like to leave them all piled up like this. We're gonna spread them out and we're gonna count them and we're gonna see just how many these oranges, how many oranges was on this tree. Um, and we may even slice one in half <clears throat> and let you look at it and see what they look like. And we might even taste it. Okay, guys, we're going to sit it on these scales here. We're going to just kind of get an idea to see about what it weighs. This thing goes to 25. Okay, I told Ms. Wanda I thought it weighed about 20 pounds. And we're right at 20. I know the Hoss thing here probably weighs a couple of pounds, so we're probably 19, probably 18, 19 pounds of uh, oranges here. We have one of our oranges here. We're going to take it. We're That's one to... we picked the other day. In the... Okay, this it's... is one we picked the other day. I wanted to show. All right, you see. This the... is how it's ripened. See the color difference? Yeah. It's a lot oranger. Now some of these may be a little bit oranger on the tree. Yeah. But a lot of them still have a good bit of green. You know what that means? That means they're going back into Thanksgiving, I believe. Yes. So here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Be real easy with it. And if y'all want to know what a green orange looks like, Crazy Days has a video on what a green orange looks and tastes like on the inside. Because we had a couple oh, of look at, that. look at this. Oh, guys, look at that. That is a beautiful orange on the inside now. And seed. And seeds, yeah, they have seeds in them. Can you save these seeds? Uh, you can, but they, you probably won't end up with a true orange tree. Oh, okay. Because it's a grafted tree? Yes, yeah, a grafted tree. Okay. Yeah. And this ain't no store bought now. You gotta realize that. Yeah, and the deal is with these, I save the orange peels. I dehydrate them. And if you've never used dehydrated orange peels, you should. Uh, you can take and uh, put them in a coffee grinder and grind them up and use them for vitamin C in the winter time. You can add them to drinks and smoothies and things like that. Any of your recipes that call for orange peel, you have it. Hold on, this is, this is the way I do it. I don't know about anybody else. I'm just fixing to bite into it. And people try to throw away the white part of the orange. Actually, the white part of the orange has a lot of nutrition in it. Yeah. And that's the part that a lot of people throw away. Mmm. I'm tired okay. of waiting on you. That's good. You don't have to wait on me. But look at that. Took it right out of there. Mmm. Mmm. Any good? Oh my gosh. A store orange has nothing on that. They have no taste. Mm. Y'all just think y'all know what an orange tastes like. Now people in Florida and California, they know what this Southern is. Southern Texas, places like that. Alabama, yeah. Louisiana. Alabama. Louis These are Louisiana oranges anyway. Mm. Oh my gosh, guys. That is good. I just hate we lost our tangelo tree. But... Mm -hmm. We're going to give us a nut. Mm. I got a spot on my hand there where a thorn stuck me on the tree to bleed, but... But this is awesome. Oh my gosh. I don't... I can't do it like you do. Yeah, you could. That had to be cut out first, that's why. Oh. Oh. I got orange all over my hands, guys. Anyway, guys... I wanted to cut your hand. I wanted to try to saw our hands off here. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to be nice for the camera. Get yourself some fruit trees. They'll grow indoors, or do you a dwarf one if nothing else, where you can have 
some fruit all like through this. the winter months. Have your own. Don't depend on the store. Guys, for what one of these trees costs and what you spend on oranges, you can have the joy of growing them in an apartment, on a balcony. Mm. Mm. I'm good, isn't it? Out on a patio on the back. Bring them in in the wintertime. Put them in front of a window. They make a great house plant. Guys. Plus you can use the peelings. You can use the peelings. You know. Oh, even people. Now, I don't know how many people know this. Lots of people don't. But even people that are on government assistance, they yes. can use their... Um, you can use your SNAP card. SNAP card to buy these trees. Yes. Now, if you've not known that, this is a perfect way for you to spend 25 or 30 bucks on a tree. Yes. Instead of 25 or 30 bucks on Twinkies. Or 25 or 30 dollars on just fruit that you'll go away if the tree will continually yes. give. Yes. You know? If you take care of it. If you take care of it. So... If you're on government assistance, don't think you can't do anything because you can buy you can. seeds, you can buy plants, yes. you can buy fruit trees. As a matter of fact, our Walmart, when they have their trees out, they have a sign there that says you can use your SNAP card. Exactly. So guys, you can do it. You can do it. So look, we got to get out of here. we got a ton of stuff to do today before this cold weather gets in. we got to get these things spread out and get them before they're not stacked up. Mm. Uh, I'll look tell you. my hand. Thanksgiving is looking better all the time, guys. Okay, guys, total, we've already eaten one today. We ate one yesterday and I think maybe another one, but uh, you know what? We had 45 oranges off of this one tree. Now, last couple of years ago, we had 66, but this year we had 45. We're totally happy about that. These will last me and Wanda for quite a while because what Wanda and I do, we usually eat a half an orange a day. Um, Throughout the cold winter months, that's 45 days of a half an orange. And that's going to give us our vitamin C for every day through the cold winter months. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.